You know, it's, we're, we're a very, Air Force as a whole, very, very busy. So, um, and while I understand and, and wholeheartedly uh, believe in the art of mastery through our exercises, because that's how we get good. That's how we get good. That's how we've become the best Air Force in the United States, the best Air Force in the, on the planet is, you know, uh, our exercises and, rep and the repetition that it takes us through. But I also believe that in this thing called self-care, in order to, you know, give the Air Force and give the missions that we have here, whether at White Men or any other installation, your best, you have to be in the best shape and you have to take care of you. And so what I would encourage each of them, each of them to do is, uh, you know, these exercises don't just pop up. They're typically planned out. And so um, during the, the seasons when you know you're going to have a lot of exercises, you have to take extra special care of yourself, making sure that you're working out, you're putting the right things in your body, you're getting the right amount of sleep. Uh, you find time uh, to balance your work life and your, and your family life. And, and I certainly understand uh, it's not easy, but uh, with a little bit of planning, I think we can all do, do do ourselves a favor and take care of ourselves so we're in an optimal condition uh, to work the long hours to get through the challenging times and, and all the things that are presented to us during exercises. <coughs> Airmen and Global Strike Command will always be a major part of our Air Force mission and the deterrence that we need that underwrites all of our other missions and you know honestly I don't see that changing a lot in the in the future in order for us to be able to do the other things that we do uh, air and space superiority rapid global mobility command and control ISR agile combat support you name it uh, again all of that is underwritten by nuclear deterrence and uh, ability to strike any target anywhere on this planet at any time. And, uh, so, I, so I believe that will always be one of the core competencies, core components of our Air Force mission. Mentorship is a function of leadership. You, you want airmen to see you as a leader. And mentorship is just one of the components of a great leader. So, so I don't think there is a need to distinguish the two. Um, if, you're, if your airmen see you as a leader, then they're going to naturally see you as someone who cares about them, who is vested in their future, who wants to help them grow. Um, and that's all part of the mentoring and development, development process. Where we might get into maybe a better question is how do we make the distinction between airmen seeing us as a leader and a manager? And, <clears throat> you know, management is of the mind, it's process driven, it's based on order, it's based on maintaining the status quo, and leadership is of the heart. You know, leadership is about, man, how do I motivate, encourage, and inspire and influence people based on how I treat them and how I deal with them, how I connect with them, get to know and understand them. So that would be the challenge, I, I would say, for, for most of us in positions of leadership is um, how do we get better at the skills, the, the, the skills and the ability that allows us to connect with, with our airmen. Training can't solve most of these things. Some of this is you and I having to really care about the people that we serve with. You know, I was just doing an all call and I talked about our airmen are a national treasure and we have to treat them as, as such, you know, lots of airmen. They join our Air Force because they want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. They want to be a part of something special. They go to basic training and they graduate and they're extremely hopeful. And we have to, it's up to us to maintain that hope. And uh, like I mentioned in there, some of that is just, man, we got to be good human beings and show people that we care about them and, and uh, you know, treat them as we would our own family.
Well, excitement and motivation are all fleeting, right? It comes and goes, comes and goes like the weather. And um, if conditions are optimal, you know, it's kind of like going for a run. Conditions are optimal. It's nice, sunny, or a cool breeze. Um, man, I'm very motivated to get out and run. But if it's negative 25 degrees, I'm actually not that motivated. So I, so I don't know that I, I want to be too concerned about leaders you know, motivating people to, to care about their jobs. Or what I would prefer is that leaders help airmen understand their why. Why are we here? Why is this mission important? Why are you is turning this wrench or fixing this computer system or conducting this this interview, you know, why is that important to, you know, our national security and the mission here at White? And I think if people can can understand and relate to and buy into uh, their why and connect their why with the Air Force's or Team Whiteman's why, then they'll have a better, much better understanding of of what they do every day and, and how it connects to the larger the larger mission. But uh, like I said, motivation sometimes can be fleeting. And, and we all need it, right? There are days when uh, I need my teammates to, to give me a little bit of hoo hoo a little bit of rah-rah. But uh, what, what seems to work better is when, when they give me the, hey, Chief, this is why you need to go out and do this. This is why it's important for you to take this meeting or connect with this, this person. That sticks. I don't know that I can predict any potential problems. I, I think, you know, it's part of our nature as military and as an Air Force. Uh, that's why we exercise, that's why we in, do inspections. We kind of prepare um, for, for, you know, potential problems in the future. <clears throat> what I would hope that we would make sure that we do is, is right now we have this emphasis on innovation. And some people are taking advantage of it and some people are not. And if we're, if we're not careful, we, we will find ourselves behind the power curve. We'll find ourselves behind you know, our peer adversaries. If everybody at all levels doesn't embrace this wave of innovation and allowing people to utilize their natural gifts and talents to come up with better ways of doing things in our United States Air Force. And at the highest level, you know, we do our spark tanks and we, you know, we, General Goldfein has allocated a ton of money, $70 million, around $70 million a year um, solely for the purpose of innovation. I've been to lots of wings with innovation laboratories that allow airmen to come in and, and, and create things and do 3D printing and AR and, and, and some of that stuff. But I don't believe that we've, as an Air Force, has fully embraced the, this, this innovation thing. And, and so in in the days of shrinking budgets and you know we don't have all of the manpower that we need, you have to be able to innovate. You have to be able to find ways of doing things more efficiently, um, faster, cheaper, smarter. And a lot of that comes down to um, airmen like yourself at the squadron level being able to use some of the natural gifts and talents that they have. Yeah, so kind of like I mentioned uh, during the all call, man, sometimes you have to bloom where you plant it and you have to realize that um, everything happens for a reason. And uh, Sometimes you may not understand why you got a certain assignment. You may not as understand why you are uh, in a particular job. But uh, the best way to advance on to the next thing is to crush the job that you currently have. And uh, it really does none of us any good. Uh, and, I, and I haven't loved every job that I it really doesn't do us any good if you're in a job and it could be a potential mismatch and you want to do something else to, to not give your all to the current job that you have. And, uh, 
like I mentioned to the team out there, sometimes you just got to try to figure out, hey, what's the lesson here for me? What should I be learning from this, this opportunity? And typically, um, again, if you crush the job that you have, the chances of you getting a better job uh, significantly increase. Well, I asked Jenna to give me some advice. So we, we helped her celebrate her Below the Zone promotion. And um, I asked her, hey, what advice would you have for an old guy like me? And her advice was, hey, don't forget where you came from. Don't forget about the, the, the little people. And I thought it was such uh, great advice from such a sharp, young, young professional defender uh, that I told her I would uh, keep. I asked her for her O rank, her A1C rank. Uh, she signed it for me, and I told her I would keep it on my pocket, keep it in my pocket at all times, as a reminder um, that I will never forget where I came from. So, yeah. So, that's for Jenna, and that's for all of the airmen that uh, myself and my teammates will never forget about what it's like to be a young young airman out of the United States Air Force. So, tell her, I want to tell her personally, thank you for being such a professional. And Thank you for the great advice. Yeah. All right. <laughs>